Hey everybody, you found the Hillbilly Voodoo channel. Today we're going to start the process of building an adapter to run the GSXR motor in the PT Cruiser. The general consensus from the comments is that we want to keep the transmission that's in the PT Cruiser so that we have reverse and we also have the four gears in the PT Cruiser, or sorry, five gears in the PT Cruiser. Plus we have the transmission on the GSXR motor and all the gear is there. How are we going to do this? Well, we searched around in our piles of ground obtainium because we somehow have to build a plate that goes across here with a bearing to support the clutch and the flywheel inside here. We have to have a shaft coming off of that clutch and flywheel that will power off of the sprocket that turns the chain on the GSXR engine. Okay, everybody following along so far? That's good, because this is probably going to be a little bit confusing until you see what's going on here. In my piles of ground obtainium, I have found, I believe it is the output, rear output, on a 205, Dana 205 transfer case. The inside of the transfer case had a catastrophic failure. All the gears went bang, bang, bang and smashed a bunch of stuff up but the output is still good. There's a shaft that goes through. If I remember correctly, there's a big, large bearing in here that should support the weight of our flywheel and our clutch assembly on this end. Okay, everybody following along so far? We're gonna put the clutch and flywheel assembly on this end. That's gonna go on to that motor, or onto that transmission. The GSXR engine is going to be powering this end, spinning all this around. We have the crank flange out of the PT Cruiser that the clutch mounts on and the flywheel and all that stuff. That will be somehow attached to this end. That will be stuffed into there. This is all going to go around and make this thing go. Now, what do I see as a potential issue here? That is the input into the transmission. That is my thumb. That is not very big. That is. We're going to put a hell of a lot of torque into this tiny little input shaft. That's where I'm potentially seeing the breakage happen. Most motors don't have a transmission before the transmission. Did that make sense? No, it didn't make sense, but it totally made sense. We are using the torque multiplication of the GSXR transmission going into this tiny little shaft. I'm hoping that it all holds up. So what am I gonna do first? I'm gonna tear this apart, see if there's actually a really big bearing in here that I can use how much of this I can shorten up because I want to keep this package all fairly tight together. And if for some reason I don't end up using the GSXR engine, I want to keep it in a way that I can put pretty much any engine on this side of it and power this transmission. So let's stop yapping here and let's start taking things apart and see if this is going to actually make something. So I've got this disassembled here. Pulled the yoke off the end of it. As I suspected, there was a very large bearing in there. So that bearing should be plenty to support the weight of the uh, clutch and the flywheel, ring gear, whatever you want to call it. It is a good roller bearing, so there should be enough thrust capacity with the clutch pushing back and forth on there. Now, this housing here holds the bearing inside. So I think that I'm going to trim all this off. There seems to be this convenient line here. I don't know what that was for. Maybe something that I was going to build out of it previously and didn't actually build it, but seems like a good place to cut it. Cut all this stuff off the end here. So that'll shorten it up about two and a half, maybe three inches. And this will be sitting inside there with that bearing. So I'll be able to machine a bunch of this off so that I can put that on the end. 
somewhere to that idea there. Is this kind of sort of making sense now? Well, let's take that cover off of there. Let's chop this off and kind of no, no going back after we chop that off. It's either going to work or it's not going to. So I'll, I'll cut it off off camera because nobody really wants to see somebody just grinding away at something. And that's about the only way I can think of to cut this is with the grinder. So yeah, let's do that and see what we got in here and go from there. This piece is chopped off here now. We still got the holes and everything in there to mount that flange on. Now I'm going to take this and stick it in the lathe and true it up so that we got a flat surface on this side also. Um, I ground it down fairly close to to the final surface. I want it to be so that the the edge of the bearing is riding right about here. So. We'll stick that in the lathe, surface it all off so that when we do mount it onto our plate that's going to go on here, it's it's flat. Yeah. Kind of looks like it might work. And if it doesn't, well then we'll have to move on to plan B. So this part here is all machined down flat now in the lathe. We might take it down a little bit more depending on how much we need of a stick out. Now I have chopped the spline end off of this thing because we're going to be using this spline for this yoke. And this is the crankshaft and I've turned the crankshaft down to accept that bearing. We're going to take this, we're going to press this into here so that it's nice and straight. We're going to weld it up and we'll turn it down so that this bearing fits all the way over nice. That will go into there. It'll all make sense when I, when I assemble it. So if you're liking the content so far, give me a thumbs up. I'll follow along on this build, which it should be a pretty good build. You should probably subscribe so you don't have to go hunting around and looking for me to watch when you want to watch me. So yeah, I'll press this in here, weld it up, and hopefully it will be nice and straight enough that we're not going to have any violent shaking when we get it all put together. So does this make more sense now? We welded this splines onto the crankshaft end this is turned down the bearing is inside of there this is going to go through like that clutch and flywheel will mount on the end out here this pinion end uh yoke whatever the hell we're calling it is going to be turned in I'm thinking that maybe I will put a Lovejoy coupler type style on here, or maybe a sprocket with the chain style coupler. I haven't quite decided that part yet, but this piece goes down like that. Bolt it on there like that. Now we mount the clutch flywheel and everything on this end and this will go onto the transmission like that. That makes sense now so far. Pretty sure it should make sense. Makes sense to me. If it makes sense to me, it should make sense to anybody. So now what I need to do is make a plate for the end of here that this is going to mount on don't have a big enough piece of steel to cover the whole thing so I'm going to probably have to weld a bunch of scabby pieces together and hopefully I'll get it flat enough that that'll be bolted on like that. Clutch and flywheel will be in here. This whole transmission, clutch flywheel and this will all act as one separate unit so that we can put any type of power that we want to it. We're not limited to the Chrysler engine. We're not limited to, to the motorcycle. We can put anything that we wanted to 
put on to the end of this to turn it to run this transmission. And that's ultimately what we're going for with this adapter. We'll put the motorcycle engine in here and see what it does. Hopefully it'll make lots of screaming noises and squeal the tires and all that kind of stuff. And if it doesn't, well, maybe we'll power it with something else. That's really weird. But anyways, the next step is going to be to build a plate, like I say, to cover over this that this can mount. Uh, I dug around in my piles of ground obtainium outside there and I found this chunk of flat steel. It was a brace off of my bobcat on the back end of it. So it's about the largest, flattest piece of steel that I have. So I'm going to cut this chunk of angle iron off the back here. Cut it in half. Weld the two halves together. And hopefully that will give me enough steel that I can go across that bell housing. Now I have to keep a gap open in here because there's bolts that go through the flywheel into the clutch that need to be accessed. So that'll give me a bit of a window opening and hopefully we'll go across from these that bolt to that bolt and across like that. So let's chop this piece up and see if we can make one big piece out of, well, well, it's still one big piece, but we'll make one piece that's different shape out of this piece. Yeah, that totally made sense in my head, but okay, let's do this. Well, I managed to scab together a nice steel plate out of that scrap of steel. Drilled it out for the bolt mounting. I used a ply, took a plywood first, and I traced it all out. And then I stuck that on there and traced all that out. Now I've built, if anybody's curious how I made the hole in there with a hole saw, that was, uh, yeah, I would say that was about as sucky as sucky can get. Um, drilling through quarter inch plate with big, I think that's a three and a half inch hole saw. It's not really something I would recommend as a good time. So I've built myself a little collar that slides over the end of the input shaft of the transmission. And it's the same size as the bearing on our retainer adapter thingy here. So now I'm going to slide that over. be able to center punch all the way around give me holes to drill it in and that means it will be right in the center of that hole everything will be all lined up and hopefully it'll work out the first time and I won't have to drill other holes so I'll uh, center punch all this and start drilling holes and see what happens drill one at a time. Let's see what we can do here with a drill. drilled through the plate there now and it's all bolted together the bearings in and everything if you've been following this build so far then you knew that we took some pretty scientific calculated measurements when we took this thing apart well not really we just kind of faked it but we know that this flange has got to be this the end of the crank which is now a part of our adapter has got to be six millimeters away from the mounting surface of the transmission. So we got that shoved in there now. Take our measurements. And we 
we have seven millimeters. So we're going to have to take one millimeter off the back side of this crank flange up against that bearing to make sure that that clutch and flywheel and everything are going to sit right in the same spot that it was in the PT Cruiser. If you're liking this build so far, you should probably hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along and keep up to date with what we're doing here. There will be a seal in here in between to keep the oil in there. I'll put oil in this end thing just to keep that bearing lubricated or grease or something. I haven't decided yet, but I do have a seal to put in there. I'm not putting it in yet till we get the crank flange adapter, whatever, you know what, the, what this is. But when we get this all situated and all put together finally, then we'll put the seal in there in the last. So make sure we get it all together here. I'm going to take that, stick it in the lathe, take the millimeter off the back, stick it back in here, measure it again, double check my work a few times and make sure that I get it right. And then I'll put the, the uh, flywheel ring gear on there and the clutch and stick it together and see what it does. Right here is where I have to take the millimeter of meat off so that it will sit up against that bearing properly. And I'm probably going to have to build some type of collar so that it all crushes together at the right depth. But that'll be for, for future Aaron to figure out. So well, let's go stick this in the lathe and take a millimeter off the back side of this. So I've got this lathe set up here, so maybe I can use it. It's kind of uh, not really wired properly, but we'll see if we can make a cut on this. I have to try to engage it slowly so it doesn't kick the breaker. That should be our one millimeter. We'll take it out and put it back together in the thing and see if it is. We got this thing all assembled here now. We got our clutch and flywheel on there and it's all set up. Spins around and round. This actually goes this way. Well, let's see if we can bolt it onto this transmission here and see if we made a thing or if we just wasted a whole bunch of time.
Well, there you go, people. We got ourselves one PT Cruiser transmission that can be powered by pretty much anything that will go around and around. So you could use a U-joint to adapt something to it. I can also build a Lovejoy coupler that will adapt, put any power to it. Hell, we could wrap a rope around there and spin that if we really wanted to. Maybe a goat powered treadmill. But no, we're gonna put that GSXR motor in there. So I think I'll leave this video here. And remember, till next time, use what you got and make what you want. Vroom, 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 vroom. Thank <laughs> you.